Let G be a finite group of even order. Show that G has an element A not equal to the identity, such that A squared equals E. So let's start by looking at some of the terminology here. So the first thing we have is group. So a group consists of a binary operation and a set such that it's closed, meaning that you take any two elements in the group and perform the binary operation and you'll get something back in the group. It's associative, that means that when you're performing the binary operation you can move the parentheses around. There is an identity element and in this case we're going to label the identity element with a lowercase e, which uh, is very common. And then there's inverses. Every element has an inverse. And for an element A, we will label the inverse as A with a little negative 1. So that's a group. Now another thing that we see here is that we have a finite group. So what does it mean to have a finite group? Okay, well, I think it's best to see what a finite group is by looking at a few examples. So we have the group S3. That has six elements in it. That's finite. We have the Klein 4 group. That has four elements in it. That's finite. We can have the integers modulo 5. That's a group with five elements. But we wouldn't just have the integers. That's not finite. It has an infinite number of elements. And we wouldn't have the real numbers. Real numbers, again, infinite number of elements. OK. And then we have the order of a group. So the order of a group, which usually is denoted with bars. So if I wanted the order of group G, I could put bars around the G. And the order of a group is the number of elements that are in the group. Okay, so we have the basic definitions here. We see that we want a group of even order. We want to show that there's some element A not equal to the identity such that A squared equals E. Well, if A squared equals E, that's the same thing as saying A times A is equal to E, the identity. And then we can multiply both sides by A inverse. And we see that A would equal A inverse. So in other words, this is saying that there's some element in the group that equals its own inverse. So we need to somehow prove that for a group of even order, such an element exists. Now when you're not sure how to go about proving something like this, which maybe in this case you might not know how to do this, it helps to look at a few examples. Take a few groups that you're familiar with and see if you can figure out for those specific ex examples what's going on. So that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, the first group that we'll look at is the group Z4. This is the set of integers from 0 up to 3 here. Uh, mod 4, meaning addition mod 4. So for instance, 0 plus 1, that's 1. 2 plus 1, that's 3. 2 plus 3 would be 5, but mod 4, that would be 1. And let's look at the elements and their inverses. So I have 0, I have 1, I have 2, and I have 3. Well, 0 is playing the role of the identity, and that's always going to equal its own inverse. But remember, for the proof, we're looking for an element that's not the identity. And also, we should say we're looking at groups of even order. The order of this group is 4, so this is of even order. And then we have the element 1. Well, if we look on the group table, it looks like 3 is the inverse. For 2, that's equal to its own inverse. There we go. And then we have 3 and 1. Notice that if we have the element 1 with an inverse of 3, the element 3 is going to have an inverse of 1. They're always going to come in pairs. And that is the one that's equal to its own inverse. So you see that we have the pair of 1 and 3, which is the same as the pair of 3 and 1, plus 2, which is equal to its own inverse, and 0, which is equal to its own inverse. And I'll sort of put these in 
parentheses here. So in other words, we have these two elements, and there's only one pair here, plus one for the two and plus one for the zero, and that equals four. And that's the order of this group. Let's look at another example. This is the Klein four group, and we represent that with a V. And so again, we'll look at the elements and the inverses, and we see that we have E, A, B, and C. And again, the identity is going to equal its own inverse. And in this case, A is the inverse of A, B is the inverse of B, and C is the inverse of C. So in this case, aside from the identity, we have all the other elements equal to their own inverse. Well, and the identity too, is equal to its own inverse. So in this case, we have, well, we have A equal to its own inverse. We have B equal to its own inverse. C equal to its own inverse and the identity. So that's one plus one plus one plus one, and that gives four which again is the order of the Klein four group. So you see kind of what's going on here. If we pair each of the elements up, it looks like for the number of elements in a pair, it's always gonna be an even number plus each of the things that were equal to their own inverses individually. Let's look at one more example. So in this case, we're looking at Z mod six this time instead of mod four and well, again, we'll look at the elements and the inverses. So for the elements, I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And for the inverses, 0 is going to be paired with 0. The inverse of 1 is 5. The inverse of 2 is 4. The inverse of 3 is 3. And we know if the inverse of 2 is 4, that the inverse of 4 must be 2. And the inverse of 5 must be 1. And so we see here is the one that's equal to its own inverse. And again, we can pair them up. So one is paired with five, and two is paired with four. And we also have three by itself and the identity by itself. So we have two of these pairs. So that's saying we have two times two, because if there's two pairs, then there's going to be two elements in each pair. So two plus two, or two times two, sorry, is four, plus one for the three, one for the identity. And that gives us six, which is the order of Z six, addition mod six. So the basic idea is if you pair the elements up with their inverses and you count up the pairs, we know that we're going to have an even number when we count up the elements here for the pairs, plus the things that are paired with themselves. And that gives us the order of the group. I think we're ready for a proof. So remember for a proof, you always want to write in complete sentences. And we should start with the premise, let G be a group of even order. And we're going to pair each element of G with its inverse, like we did with the examples. And we're going to note that the identity element, E, is paired with itself then G consists of the union of all of the pairs. Now suppose that no element other than the identity is paired with itself. Now, in this case, we know that that's not going to work out, so we're gonna get a contradiction. Let the number of pairs excluding the identity be N. And remember when we had, say, in the example of addition mod six, we paired one with five, and then five was paired with one, we're counting that as one pair, it's the same thing. One and five, five and one, same thing. So then the order of G was two times the number of pairs plus one. Why is it two N plus one? Well, we had two N because each pair consisted of two elements, plus one for the identity. But that makes the order of G odd. Two N plus one would be an odd number which is a contradiction. So there must be at least one other element that is paired with its inverse. Let's let A be that element that's paired with its inverse. And then we know that if A is equal to its inverse, that's the same thing as A squared being equal to the identity.